I find my rest without you.
Good morning, PNC. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Good morning, online community and Pastor Melissa. We're so glad to have you guys with us today. Um, this past week on Wednesday, did anybody get a chance to come to the Thanksgiving service? Wasn't that so much fun? Um, as we're doing this study on kingdom, uh, bringing the kingdom to earth, that is like my picture of the kingdom on earth. Just being able to come, have that group, and just worshiping together as a, as a church and listening to everybody's gratitude, all the good things going on. And I know we have hard things going on too, but for a moment we just got to listen to the good. The kids were so cute, so hilarious. Um, some of you guys have a good sense of humor too. And then moving over to put the boxes together, I got to hang out with so many people, talk with so many friends. Um, what an amazing night. That's what I love about this, the connection. So for, my, for me personally, thank you guys for coming because I had a great time. You know, she threw that word connection in for a reason, right? <laughs> so, hey, um, yeah, it was a great it was a great time together as a community. And so uh, now would be a great time for you to fill out your Connect card if you would like to. Let us know that you're here. Uh, but more importantly, share with us your lives. So what can we pray for you over? What can we praise alongside of you with and how God's moving in your life? So we just want to encourage you to take a quick minute to do that. While you're doing that, we will launch right into all the things you need to know about this week. First of all, we've been talking for months about Philip Zimmerman coming, right? We've been doing this study. We've been getting ready for the Kingdom First thing, and he is here. Today's the day. And so, um, woohoo! I have already, we've already heard Philip speak today, and I'm telling you, it is amazing. So fasten your seatbelts, because... Um, yeah, it's, it's a privilege to have him here, so welcome, Philip. We're glad to have you. Um, he will be coming back again tonight at 6 o'clock, so we want to encourage you to come to that. Grab anyone who will come with you. Um, Philip's message is not something that is wasted speech, so we'd love to have as many people in here as we possibly can so that we can really take advantage of the way God is spilling out and through Philip. So, yeah. You know, I get to talk about the Christmas party, which I love talking about parties, the Thanksgiving party, the Christmas party, but that just reminded me, when we first started doing the, King, uh, the Philip Zimmerman study and we talked about what the kingdom is like and what heaven is like, my in my head, it was the Christmas parties when I was a kid growing up. And so um, I get to talk about this Christmas party for PNC on December 2nd. So mark your calendars. It is in the gym, um, and there will be more information about that coming soon. I don't know if you did this on purpose or not, but one of our first, for those of you in group life, one of our first lessons was to talk about the different attributes of God, and one of them is the kingdom of God is like a party, right? So yay. Um, hey, another way that we are going to celebrate, and it's kind of like a party, is um, to, on December 5th, be able to show the season three episodes one and two of The Chosen. So right now, it's happening in theaters. We encourage you to go to the theaters, take your friends, particularly if there's people that you would like to introduce them to Jesus or help them understand who he is in a different way. Um, this is a great way to do that and not drag them to church. It's, it's off-site, right? So that's a great way to do it. <laughs> but there's also something profound about coming and watching it here and having the space here to discuss afterwards and just be together as a community. Um, but I, I just want to reiterate, this is not just for us. It's a tool for us to use to help people open conversations about that. Now, one of the things that's really great, oh, let me, let me um, specify. In the Connect email that you get on Thursdays last week, there was a link for you to very conveniently purchase tickets um, in the theaters, but there's also another link for you to purchase your tickets at PNC, for the showing at PNC. Um, it's important for me to tell you, because a couple of people have asked, PNC is not making any money on this, nor do we have to pay. This is something that the movie theater, or excuse me, the, the production company is the one who um, is making this available. And so those tickets just cover the cost of getting it here. That's all that is. And then the other thing that's fun is, you know how you go to a movie and you like to have concessions? Well, let me tell you what's going to be available to you on December 5th. Wait for it. Full service commons. We are opening the commons all the way finally, on December 5th. So um, First Service was really excited about that. It's okay if you're not, but I am, so I am. give a little woohoo for that. 
Yes, You're I'm next. very excited about the comments yes, being she open. <laughs> um, hey, you may have noticed in the lobby that the wishing tree has already started. This is the first Sunday to grab your star. Um, it's something you can do individually. It's also something you can do as a group. So maybe you do it with your family, maybe a group of neighbors, um, some friends, or maybe even your work team. But it's a great opportunity to show some love, share the love of Jesus with people in our community who just need a little extra boost this holiday season. Um, and the best part, too, is that we don't e you don't even have to be a part of PNC to participate. So if you hear some um, scuttle around your neighborhood or at work about people wanting to do something like that, they can come in and grab a star as well. Um, great way to get them through the door uh, <laughs> into our church just to grab a star so they can participate. But we do need those gifts back by December 11th. And if it's easier for you, there is an option on the PushPay app where you can donate to the Wishing Star or Wishing Tree through that. Yes. And then the last thing we want to let you know about is because next week is the first Sunday of Advent, between now and then, all of the elves will come in and magically decorate the church. <laughs> Except that we are a tradition that doesn't believe in elves, which means we need some people to help. So if you are available and you have muscles, today between 2 and 4 is the time when we bring everything out of storage. And we would love to have some help. A few strong people helping with that will get it done quickly. And then tomorrow morning from 9 to 11.30, and then all day on Tuesday. If you're available, there are slots where you can sign up, or you can just come talk to me after church, and I can um, fill you in or help you with that. But we would love to have you come and help. Again, grab a couple of friends, decorate it up. It goes quick if there's a lot of us, and then next week when we come back, we will get to experience that transformed church and enter into um, all of the things that go with the incarnation of Christ. So, yeah. Awesome. All right, well, let's go ahead and pray before we go back into worship. Would you stand while we pray, please? Lord Jesus, we love you. We are just so grateful for your blessings, for the fact that you're here with us right now, that we get to celebrate you this coming season. Um, we're grateful for the power that is in your name, uh, that you are our hope and our peace and our joy. And we just ask that through today's message, we are inspired to be, to represent you in our communities, in our neighborhoods, in our families, um, to share the love and the blessings that you have shown us, that you continue to show us. Um, we just love you and we're so grateful. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being here, everyone. All right. Well, if you'd stay standing with us. Um, I am just so excited and happy to see all of your beautiful and very handsome faces. And I'm so happy that you're here, whether you're online with us or whether you're in person. Um, it's such a blessing for us to be able to worship with you. And I also want to encourage you that as you worship, that you would just take this as a time between you and God to lift up your burdens, anything that's weighing you down. Please don't let anything separate you from focusing on God. And so some of our songs talk about lifting our hands. And I would encourage you to do that if you feel comfortable, just as a way to represent that, God, I give you whatever it is that's on my mind, whatever it is that's on my heart, and I trust you to take care of it. Because I can guarantee you, he will. That's what his promise is to us. And so as we worship, um, I invite you to take this as a moment to really inspect yourself and maybe what's weighing you down, what's burdening you, and take it as a moment to truly, truly, truly lift it up to God. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where fear
Yeah. 
you we worship you and we just thank you that we know that many of us were lost at times and that you did leave those 99 and you just came after us and we're so thankful that you are our king and there's no words that we really can sing or say that to, de to describe the beauty of who you are and what you've done and what you will do God, we just praise you and we just lay down ourselves and our hearts and we express our gratitude to you in giving our hearts to you. You are everything. Thank you, Jesus. Sing this song as 
have Thanksgiving Chapel coming up and we have been selected to sing for it and they're singing this song and this next part brings me so much joy because when they sing it they let loose it's their favorite part of the song and they love singing the words and the words talk about not getting shy and being like a lion and so I encourage you to channel your inner fifth grader and sing this with me and a joyful, chaotic noise, because I'm going to do it. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song, because you got a lion inside of those stones. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. so much that all we have to do is cry out to you and you are here for us we are so grateful for everything that has happened in the past and we are so looking forward to all of the ways that you are going to follow through in the future God I thank you that you love us so much that all we need to be is ourselves that's it we just need to be ourselves with you God because you created us for a specific plan, a specific purpose, even when we don't see it and we don't feel like we know that you have specifically chosen us to be who we are. So Lord, I pray over any hopes, any dreams, any ambitions in this room right now or online, God, that you are helping those come to light. 
Lord, that you are providing in any area of need. Lord, you're providing for our physical health, our spiritual health, our mental health. Lord, that you are taking care of us. God, give us our daily bread. Lord, I thank you for the times when we are in need and that we can rejoice in those times because we know that this is just another example of when you're going to come through. And we're never going to be able to see when that happens or why things happen, but we know that we can trust in you. So I pray over every house that's represented here or online, every family that's represented here or online, as we're going into this holiday week, God, that you would fill us with so much of your joy and love and compassion and enthusiasm and grace and hope that every person we come across would catch the same joy and hope and enthusiasm that we have. Lord, make us contagious to every person that we come across. Lord, I pray for any spirits in here today that may be dry, that may just need a moment with you, God, that you would provide that moment. Lord, I pray that you would open our ears so that we can hear everything that you're trying to tell us through the message today, God. I pray against any distractions. I pray against any burdens that are holding us back from hearing you today, God. Lord, that you would take those away. Take every single burden that we have lifted up to you in this worship time and that we continue to lift up to you. Lord, take those burdens away from us so that we can be like fifth graders singing about lions at the top of our lungs, God, that that's who we are, that that's the kind of joy and peace that you give us. We thank you that your burden is light. But I thank you again for each person who is here or online listening, that you would just be a blessing to all of us. That whatever we need, you're providing. In your holy, holy, holy name, amen. Oh, man, you may be seated for just a moment. Thank you, Liz, for the prayer. Blesses us and moves us. It's great. Uh, just this morning, uh, I was uh, listening to Lectio 365, which is a devotional app, and, and it quoted that verse. And it's been said several times today that my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And the one translation puts it like this, the burden I give you is light. And I thought, oh, my goodness, there's a lot of burdens I carry that are not light. I wonder who gave them to me. <laughs> I wonder who gave them to me. The burden I give to you is like it's light. Like it, it, my yoke fits well, right? So uh, the, the, the statement was um, later then in that was that, you know, uh, an easy life uh, is not an option, but an easy yoke is one that fits well, is given to us. Amen. Yeah. Now, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for joining with us in this, in this time. Uh, let's just uh, let's stand together. Would you greet one another? Uh, this is a time where you can just extend um, a greeting and welcome each other. Meet somebody that you don't know. Uh, tell them that God loves them and you're working on it, and that will be really a good segue into the next conversation. Thank you.
So as, uh, as we're concluding uh, our greeting time, I just want to thank you all for uh, your faithfulness in giving and uh, um, just, just kind of like the stellar faithfulness that's taken place uh, over, over the last several years has just been amazing and we really appreciate it. There are some uh, ways that you can see to give electronically and then also if you just have um, envelope or cash or check or something that you can deposit in the boxes that are on the way out uh, of the exits there. So it's so good. I, I just really want to, in a moment, we're going to wel welcome Philip Zimmerman uh, from Germany uh, to be with us um, and to speak this morning. Uh, first of all, I just want to tell you, I felt impressed uh, today to, to just uh, tell you the story of, of what happened to me. Uh, while I was uh, actually uh, teaching, I was standing in front of a congregation at my previous church a number of years ago, and I, I was um, preaching out of Luke 10, teaching out of the time that Jesus sent his uh, disciples, sent 72 of them. You know, there was the 12, but then there was another occasion where he sent 72 others out in, in uh, kind of like two by two uh, into the villages around, and he gave them the authority to heal sick, uh, to uh, proclaim the kingdom, to bring the good news. And uh, anyway, it was a remarkable uh, missionary journey for them. I mean, they went into these villages and places. They had all kinds of very surprising experiences. I mean, what they, what they had seen God do through Jesus, they got to experience God doing through them, which would kind of blow you away, wouldn't it? And so um, when they came back, they began to just tell Jesus everything that happened, and they were amazed and um, then Jesus, um, it says that uh, after a little discussion, Jesus then lifted his eyes to heaven and, and he prayed. And here's what he prayed. He says, Father, I thank you that you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and have revealed them to little children, for this was your good pleasure. And so while I'm teaching this, I read this out and then, and then I just say it again. Father, I thank you that you've hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. And right in the middle of that, it's just like I had this spiritual experience. While I'm teaching, right, it's like the Holy Spirit stood right in front of me, like in front of this and facing me, and put his finger here, uh, not like harshly, but really very, very directly, <laughs> and said to me, and David... And I said in the first service, God does not call me Pastor Dave. He said, he said, and David, you have been wise and learned. I don't even know how I made it through the rest of the service. Like the whole afternoon, I just spent in repentance. My heart was broken that I would, that God would see me as wise and learned, not as a little child. And I didn't even know I'd become like that, right? I didn't even know that. And, and he began to show me how that was so. And again, the whole afternoon was spent like that. And I, I just made this commitment to God that I was going to be the best I knew how, a lifelong learner. I wanted a childlike heart. And that somehow, in a really huge way, that really mattered to God, right? So, here's what I know. doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. That's not the issue. The issue is the heart. Are we willing to be like children? So, I want to welcome you to the, to the school of the childlike. You know, before you can become Christ-like, you must become childlike. There's like, there's, there's, it just fits together that way. <laughs> it's not like the, the proud or arrogant or the religiously, you know, we got it all put together, you know, and I know, you know, I know all this. I mean, I thought by now I would know a lot more than I do. I, I've discovered that, that being a childlike learner is really a beautiful place to be. So I invite you into that. So when we began this partnership, Coming out of, of COVID and different things, we were asking the question about how do we, how do we truly, you know, help our hearts enter into the places that Jesus is taking us in order to disciple us. So being discipled is not just simply about hunkering down around Scripture only. It includes that, but it includes like 
when I raise my hand in the hallelujah, there's, it needs to say something about how God has captivated my heart, and I'll go with him. Amen. So we have this wonderful partnership with uh, Church in Action in Germany, and uh, there's this give and take where we're able to support and pray, uh, and this is all fairly new, so some of you are just like, oh, we, do ha we have that? Yes, we do. And uh, where they also, uh, Philip uh, brings community on mission and, and teaching and training us and helping us to be missional in our following of Jesus. So would you please welcome uh, Philip Zimmerman as he comes and uh, shares uh, God's word with us today, right? Amen. Whoa. Welcome, Philip. It's a joy to be with you. It, it really is. Um, the first service, everybody was nice, so my expectations are up uh, for the second service as well. <clears throat> uh, you actually don't have to say that in America, because uh, you are always very nice. And then sometimes later I hear uh, that the, the, the honest truth, but it is later. Not uh, the Germans, you know, you, you get it right away. Uh, if you want it or if you don't, uh, you still get it. Um, uh, so that, that's at least one, one uh, big difference <laughs> between, uh, between the two cultures. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful uh, for the opportunity to actually share a little bit. I want to, the, the, the first um, a few minutes, I just want to give you a little um, overview of what we are doing in Germany, uh, just so that you can kind of know what it looks like, uh, what you can pray for, and uh, also want to thank you for in investing and praying uh, for us. We really, are, we really are the mission field, so to speak. In Germany, we have less than 1% to 2% of people who actually go to church on a regular basis. Okay, we, we basically the country of the Reformation. Uh, we, our church attendance, I think, was 995 at one point. <laughs> and now we are down to 1% to 2% of people who, uh, who would go to, to church on a regular, uh, regular basis. And, uh, and, and so um, when we started and dreamed of, of, of church in action um, 14, 15 years ago when, we, when I started it, um, I did not know exactly what it would look like. Because uh, if, if you live in a culture where people don't want to come to you, uh, you are, have to ask the question, what would it look like if a church goes to the people? Uh, and uh, we still don't know all what that means. We just said we need to be faithful. If people don't come to us, we can't just wait. Um, we, need to, we need to meet uh, people where they, where they are. So uh, I just want to show you a few pictures on, on kind of where that led us and, and, and what kind of developed out of, out of it. Not to, to say that this is what it should look like everywhere. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but to give us an, an uh, idea of what it can look like and that church in different places uh, can look in uh, different ways and it can spark imagination even maybe for what, uh, uh, what it can look like in, in some areas uh, of, of your community. So this is Frankfurt uh, and uh, this picture already shows you a lot of what you need to know. In the middle there is a Catholic and, the, and a Lutheran church and uh, uh, we are basically state church um, uh, background. Uh, so still 68% of Germans are either Catholic or, or Lutheran, but they all, or most of them would say we are agnostic, so we don't know, and we don't really participate in church. Unless it's Christmas, uh, we go to, to church on Christmas Eve. Uh, this, is, this is big for us. But, uh, so there are around 35% of Germans who actually go to, go to church once, uh, once a year. Uh, and back in the day, you were only allowed to build as high as the church. And so uh, there are many cities where we don't have a skyline because of that reason in Europe. Um, because the church had to be the highest building because it was the authority. It was always at the center of the, uh, of the city. And then now you see the skyline of Frankfurt in, in the background. But we started in Mainz, which is kind of 20 minutes from the Frankfurt airport. Then in Frankfurt, Darmstadt, Wiesbaden, and Offenbach. And this is basically where we do uh, ministry. The next picture, um, uh, is uh, an example of what we started around 13 years ago, our, our coffee shop. Uh, we, we said, uh, you know, if people don't come to us, how can we actually go where people are? And in Germany, you know, the downtowns are always closed uh, to cars, so everybody's walking. We, we kind of live outside, uh, uh, especially uh, in the summer, and, 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 and we walk the streets. And, and we started a coffee shop right there in, in the middle of the, uh, of the city, because we said, you know, Jesus, for the first 30 years, he actually 
moved and, and, and lived among the people that he wanted to reach without ever preaching, healing, or calling disciples. I mean, just imagine the, the, the whole history was waiting for God to show up, and then what does, what does God do? <laughs> for 30 years, he doesn't do anything what we f would feel important from a ministry point of view. He just wanted to become like the culture he wanted to reach. And there is deep, deep uh, theology in that as, as, as Christians, if we want to be like Christ, we, we, we can't just say, oh, the culture is bad and I don't want to have anything to do with the culture. We're actually called to be incarnated into the culture in order to transform the culture. So we, we try to do this uh, through our coffee shops. Um, uh, which, uh, they are not Christian coffee shops. It's not like you get a Bible verse on, on every cup. Uh, it's, it, it's really to say we want to live among the people we want to reach. I lived right across the street of this coffee shop when I was pastoring and uh, the, being the city pastor there. And for me, the, the street was kind of my parish. Uh, I, I wanted to be the pastor for, for, for this neighborhood. And it gave us a place where, where people can really belong before, uh, before they believe or behave like us. Um, uh, the next picture is uh, another coffee shop that we have in the city of uh, Offenbach, um, uh, our our church latest, basically, church plan in 2019 that we did in the city of Offenbach. Again, the idea is to just be where, where the people are. Um, I remember uh, sitting in one of our coffee shops and we given somebody a job uh, and uh, and so normally our ratio is allowed hey if, if we have 50 percent Christians and 50 percent non-Christians working for us uh, we, we feel like this is pretty good first of all we don't have a lot of Christians but then it's also an opportunity for actually people to belong before they believe and, and can contribute and so we've always had this uh, the, the, this kind of idea hey Christian and non-Christians working together and to be, to be honest sometimes I don't know who belongs in which group because uh, working uh, uh, together can show you the, the best and the worst in people but I remember sitting there and uh, there was somebody who we gave a job uh, um, as a barista and, uh, and uh, he sat down and said, Philip, I need to talk to you. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, that's, that's good. What, what do you, what do you, what do you uh, uh, what's on your heart? He wasn't part of our church or anything. Uh, he basically said, Philip, I've messed up. And I was like, whoa, you messed up. Um, that's not good. Uh, what did you mess up with? And he said, well, I've been stealing from the coffee shop. I was like, oh, yeah, you did mess up. Um, uh, but I was very intrigued because normally I found out later when I do the numbers that people were stealing from our coffee shop and, and not to do somebody confessing this to me. So um, I was like, okay, uh, why are you telling me this? And then he said, Philip, I've, a few weeks ago I've started coming to also the, the Bible studies you offer from the church and now I can't sleep at night anymore. <laughs> And so my pastoral heart really rejoiced because it's exactly what I want to see, that people can belong, they can be part of the community, even if they don't believe or behave like us. Now, my business heart wanted to punch him in the face, okay? Uh, and the good thing is I did do my devotions that morning, and, uh, and so I didn't punch him. And a, a few uh, weeks later, we actually baptized him. And it was just this example of saying, okay, how can you live among uh, people? The next uh, picture is... Uh, is a, a, a project called Spielmobil. It's actually a van full of uh, toys. And uh, if you know the history, 2016, Germany opened up its borders and uh, over a million refugees came to Germany. Um, uh, uh, you know, and Germany is as big as Oregon. Um, uh, we have around 80 million people in the size of Oregon, uh, basically, in, in Germany living there. And over a million people came, came in. And, and I kind of always say that I, I really don't... don't don't care too much about what your view is on, you know, your political view on refugees, because we can all have our different opinions on, on, on that. But once the stranger becomes our neighbor, we have a very clear mandate to take care of our neighbor. Uh, the Bible is very clear on, 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 on how we need a love. And we knew that if, if over a million refugees are coming in, we need a, we, there, there are going to be so many kids uh, that, 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 that all their childhood was was basically war and, and, uh, and, and, and basically um, months or sometimes years to try to, f to flee their country. And so there was a lot of trauma, there was a lot of brokenness, and we said, we, we get this van full of toys, and we're just going to bring an afternoon of, of joy to these refugee camps. And uh, so with our communities on mission, we go into the refugee camps and just wanting to give these kids back an afternoon of their, of, of their childhood.
Then out of this, uh, it kind of developed a heart, and that's the next picture, to go a little deeper. And, and, and this was a, a, basically a fitness club that was transformed into a refugee home. And there are 60 refugees that live there. And uh, we actually own this place, and the government pays us to take care of the refugees so that, that we, we can uh, develop deeper uh, relationships uh, uh, with them. The next uh, picture uh, you see basically is a picture that represents that, that we, we are in the inner city, so there's a lot of uh, poor, um, poor um, and homelessness that also we are, we are kind of uh, are involved in when it comes to our ministry. But kind of our vision was always, I heard it uh, uh, said very well, that we don't just want to, you know, we don't just want soup kitchens, we want some, uh, uh, we want more potlucks. And so our approach to, to working with the poor is actually to have the poor around the table. <laughs> and so one of our services where, 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 uh, that, that happens Sunday night is uh, uh, where we have a meal and a service, and around 40% uh, percent are either poor or homeless who actually are partaking in this, uh, this service. And it's a beautiful mess. Uh, it smells strange. If you're not used to it, it's like, wow, this is uh, the fragrance of God, you know, in, the, in, in this place. Um, uh, but, but, but the idea is to let, let's be together, uh, the, the, the church. I remember after, after three years, uh, just to, tell, to show you what an effective communicator, communicator and, uh, and preacher I am, um, a, a friend of mine came uh, who lives on the streets, and, and he said, Philip, now after three years, I read the Bible for the first time last week. And I was like, this is great. You read the Bible. For, what, what did you read? And I said, well, I read the Bible. I said, what do you mean you read the Bible? Which part of the Bible? You know, I wanted to quiz him uh, if you really read the Bible. And he says, no, well, I read the Bible. And I look at him and said, you read the whole Bible? He says, yeah, I read the whole Bible. I looked at him, man, you, need, you have too much time. You need a job, brother. Uh, uh, but he read the whole Bible during the last week. And then four months later, he kind of uh, told me that, Philip, you would be proud of me. I prayed for the first time. Let's see what your God can do. And sometimes that's just how long it takes, years of just investing and being part of, 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 of people for them to make uh, strides. And the next picture is uh, a, a picture of, a, uh, of an orchestra that where we have 60 musicians and half of them are refugees and the other half are German. And the, these are, uh, some of them were professional musicians in their home country that had to flee, leave, uh, leave their instrument behind. And we didn't just want to serve refugees, we wanted to give back dignity to, uh, to refugees. So, so this was a project that we helped start, it's now an own organization, uh, basically that, that does concerts. They have done, this concert was in, in front of 800 people. Where, where they were able to give back from their culture and their gifts and talents uh, to, to Germany. They have done over 600 concerts in ensembles where, where they actually get paid to do that, and, and so jobs are created. They performed in front of our government, our chancellor, our president have heard them, all to say, okay, you also have something to, to, to give back to Germany. The next uh, a, a picture is uh, a, a picture of, uh, of our ministry in the red light district. Prostitution is, is legal in Germany, and so we can, kind of really were wrestling a few years back, uh, and I asked the question, if Jesus would be present, uh, bodily present in, in, in my city, where would he be? And the answer was he wouldn't be sitting in the first row on Sunday morning. Now, I love when people are sitting in the first row, but he wouldn't be, that, that's not where Jesus would be, not the Jesus of the Gospels. Where would he be? He would be in the places where there is more brokenness and, and more suffering than we could ever imagine. That, that's where I would find Jesus. And, and we said, this is in our brothels. We need, a, we need a be. If we are the church, we need to be at the, at the most darkest and broken places of our city. And, and, and for us, the, these are uh, brothels. So we came up with this very sophisticated strategy um, uh, to get into the brothel. Because normally there's a bouncer in front of the brothel. And, uh, and, and we have women teams that go in. We have uh, around 60 to 70 volunteers now that every week go into the brothels. Uh, uh, to visit uh, uh, and, and, and show dignity and love to, uh, to, to prostitutes. And uh, we found out that if you bribe the bouncer, you get in. And the best way to bribe them is through uh, uh, American brownies. So we are very good in Germany to, to bake American brownies, to bribe our way into the brothels. Out of this developed a drop-in center right at the heart of the refugee, uh, out of the red light district. So we are at the heart in, in, uh, in the red light district in Frankfurt. We have a drop-in center uh, where, where, um, where, where prostitutes now can come to us 
uh, and have a space um, a room. We started a service even with and for prostitutes in these rooms. Um, we had a lot of birthday parties for prostitutes because, you know, the vision of church in action is we want to see how heaven breaks into our lives, our city, and our world. And, and we said, you know, in, in heaven, everybody is going to have a birthday party. So we, we wanted to say, you know, the kingdom of God is really where, where people have birthday parties, even if normally nobody uh, remembers them or celebrates them. The next uh, a picture is uh, a picture that represents kind of the, our ministry in the elderly home. So we do something called Granny's Coffee. So we have communities on mission that, that go into an elderly home, which basically is, a, is, is the place in Germany where there is most, most of the loneliness in the city. Uh, people just put their parents into an elderly home or they don't have kids and, and there's just a lot of loneliness. And we said, you know, there's no loneliness in heaven. How can we bring heaven to earth? And we, we'll, just, uh, we'll just have a party at, 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 at these elderly homes. And so uh, we bake basically a bunch of cakes. And when I say we, I say uh, it's not me that's doing the baking. That would not be heaven on earth. But uh, we come with a bunch of cakes and just celebrate uh, an afternoon of uh, of fun uh, and of, uh, uh, of, of, of fellowship. Uh, we, we sometimes have wor worship services on Sunday also in the uh, elderly homes. Um, but, uh, but it's really to say, okay, uh, you, you are not, you're not forgotten and you, you matter. Um, uh, uh, so uh, then on Sunday we are in different, in, in different places. Uh, we, are, we don't have a church building, so we are in coffee shop, bars, restaurants. This is a coffee shop. Sometimes we rent them. The next picture, uh, um, uh, this is like a comedy hall that, that we used for some time. Next picture, we, we, we basically, um, there was our, our own coffee shop that we use for, for Sundays. Uh, when it's closed, we do services there. We are in refugee home, elderly home. Um, next uh, a picture, we basically really are uh, also, you know, wanting to see life transformation on a personal level through, through baptism. This, this man, Robert, actually, some people in our church were out uh, and about uh, uh, Saturday night, met him in a bar or in a club, and, uh, and uh, said that, uh, uh, you know what, we actually have a, a worship, uh, we have actually a worship service in in a bar um, uh, tomorrow, and, and uh, he said, well, where is the, the bar? I said, oh. uh, you know, gave him kind of the, uh, the, the address and said, oh, you know what, that's actually the part of town where I'm from, and that's my favorite bar, so of course I'm coming. And uh, God started to work in him, and he's actually now one of our city pastors uh, in, uh, in, 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 in Germany. Now, uh, the last picture, um, uh, in the summer we take a break, and uh, for six weeks, no services, no community submission, no activities, we invite people to go on be on mission all over the world and we take normally 100 to 120 people um, uh, uh, all over the place have 10 uh, working witness trips mission trips um, uh, all over and we've even taken a prostitute uh, to serve in India with us so we really try to push this to to an extreme of what 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 it what what it means to really can uh, that people can belong and 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 contribute uh, and and part of that being on that journey together experience life transformation um, uh, uh, together. So I tell you all of this to number one. Hopefully tell you now this German up there needs my prayer, okay? Because uh, we need your prayer. Um, uh, and number two, I, I hope it will kind of show you that God is, and His Spirit is at work. Sometimes we think it's only at work when we come together and meet in a church. God is at work in the community. God is at work in the city that we are part of. And we can join Him and experience amazing things uh, when, we, when we actually join Him and, uh, and experience uh, that. Now, I want to uh, turn to uh, one of my favorite ch chapters actually in the Bible, uh, because it's a chapter that is also my motivation of why we do all the, this crazy uh, stuff that we do. And, and I think it also gives us a, a ministry philosophy for the church that's just deeply uh, um, important to kind of always revisit uh, at the same time. So it's Mark chapter 9. Um, and I'm not going to read the whole chapter. Uh, it'll take us a little too long. But... I'll invite you to actually study Mark chapter 9 over the next uh, a few days. Uh, and I just want to highlight um, a few of the stories because I think as the stories unfold in Mark chapter 9, we really get an idea of, uh, of, of what it's all about. So the beginning of, the, of, of Mark chapter 9 is Jesus taking Peter, James, James, and John onto a mountain. You know, 
if you've been around church, you know the story. It's the Mount of Transfiguration, how most Bibles kind of give it a headline, because there is something amazing that is happening. Jesus is taking three disciples, Peter, James, and John, and says, we're going to go on to that mountain. And on that mountain, they have an unbelievable uh, experience, a mountaintop experience. There's all of a sudden, there is uh, these two uh, heroes from the Old Testament, Elijah and Moses, showing up and talking to Jesus. So just imagine being in the presence of God, and there's Moses and Elijah and Jesus, and it's just, it's just unbelievable. A moment they will never forget in, in, in their lives, they, where all of a sudden God's presence is, 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 uh, is, is here, and, um, and uh, uh, you know, uh, these, these moments where, where all of a sudden, you know, we, we can talk about uh, before and after, because all of a sudden there, there is an experience that, that really has shaped our lives and changed our lives. And I just want to pause here for a second, because I... I'm a deep believer, and that's a deep motivation for my ministry, is that I really believe that God still has these experiences on the mountain for each one of us in the times when we need them. That God still wants to invite us onto the mountain to, 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 to take us aside when, when we've run dry or when we don't know, is there God or is there no God? Is, is God for me or is he against me? That, that there are moments in history uh, it, it, where, where all of a sudden, you know, it, 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 it's not just a religion, it's, it's something deeply personal where, where God meets us. I, I remember for me, one of these moments was when I actually became, became a, a Christian. I didn't grow up in the church. For me, church was going to church once a year for Christmas. So it was really, really good because we celebrate Christmas on, uh, on Christmas Eve. So all of the gifts come on Christmas Eve in Germany. We don't have to wait until the 25th. We get them on the 24th. So, uh, so for me, it was, church was great. You go to church, you suffer through it, and then you get all these presents. Okay, this was my... Uh, so for me, church was wonderful. And right, later I realized there are not presents every time you go to church. But that's another story. So... So, so we, we did, Germans basically are agnostics. So, so we, we just don't know and we don't care uh, so much. But when, when I was around 14 years old, I, I wanted to know. I, I thought, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to solve this God question. And, and so as a very humble German, I told God, I said, God, you have two weeks to show up. If you show up in these two weeks, I will follow you with the rest of my life. I mean, why wouldn't I? It would be stupid if I don't. If you made me, if you know, I mean, you know, so, 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 so if there is a God, of course I will follow you. You know best what is best for me, so I, I, will, I will follow you. But if you don't show up, I just do whatever I want. Uh, and one day if I stand in front of you, I can always say, hey, you had your two weeks. You know, I, I would do it more humble. But uh, basically, I, I, for me, this would make, uh, you know, a lot of sense because if he's God, he can show up in two weeks. So, with this motivation, um, basically, I went on this journey for two weeks uh, to meet God. And uh, it, it happened uh, to be that uh, I was supposed to learn some English in uh, in uh, England. And uh, because of our family uh, um, background, they uh, it was part of a Christian camp, which I thought was great. So I knew I was uh, what I was getting into because I thought, oh, I'll have a you know two weeks of just Christians gathering, and they believe in God, so maybe I can meet God in, during that time. So I go to this camp, and every night I was I was I would be praying, I would be talking. I don't know, you know, what I was. God, I'm sitting here, I'm ready. <laughs> just let me know if, <laughs> whenever you are ready, I'm 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 good to go. Because I just couldn't believe. Now, if you didn't grow up maybe in a Christian family, and or you know, you 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 can relate to that. If faith was always a part of your tradition, you maybe think this is crazy. But we just, I said, no, God, you really need it. You need to give me a sign because I can't believe in you. So, uh, I, I, and, and to be honest, if you don't grow up in the church, so some of the things you do are, is really weird, okay? Um, uh, uh, and uh, there's, there's a lot of friendliness, a lot of hugging. I'm, uh, you know, I'm like, hey, you don't need to all hug me. It's, uh, it's all good. Um, uh, it, because this community, when the first time you step into it, it's just, it's just a lot. Uh, we have our own language. We have our own way of, 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 of dealing. I mean, I remember sitting in a service, and they introduced the Lord's uh, uh, the supper, you know, and they said, now we're going to uh, eat, uh, you know, um, eat, eat uh, somebody's body and eat, uh, drink somebody's blood. And I'm like, we're going to do what? Um, uh, where I come from, we don't do that, y you know. And I, I'm like, this is not good. Uh, uh, but 
But I kind of tried to, to, to give myself in, into this, and, and uh, I said, I'm, I'm going to do this, and nothing happened. So for two weeks, nothing happened. So I kind of was in, in the middle saying, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Uh, I tried it, it, it's not working. But then I, I was sitting there in one of the last services, and I didn't, it wasn't paying a lot of attention, didn't understand too much English anyways. So, so I was sitting there in a theater, and they showed a clip from the old Jesus film, uh, you, you know, the old movie that normally, you know, is a very hit in, in, in Africa where they've never seen a movie. Now, I grew up with James Bond, so this is not like a blockbuster video that kind of really surprises me. Uh, but all of a sudden, there was Jesus hanging on the cross. It was a two-minute clip, and it was like God just hit me. It, 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 it was there was a light coming into my life. I, 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 I'm not an emotional German, but I, I started kind of tearing up, got goosebumps, and, and it, it was like I heard... The words of God in my heart, Philip, this is how much I love you. And it, it blew me away. It, it, it blew me away because all of a sudden I realized it's not just that there is a, that there is a God. There is a God who is for me, <laughs> who loves me, and who would even go to die on the cross uh, uh, for me. I, I don't know if you know Blaise Pascal. If you know him, you, you more and most probably don't like him because he laid down the basic princi uh, principles of calculus. Okay, Now, Listen to what he wrote in his journal. He, he wrote, 10.30 p.m., I found him. Not the God of the philosophers, not the God of the theologians, scientists, or scholars. No, the God of Abraham, Moses, and Jacob. Fire, joy, fire, joy, fire, joy, fire, fire, joy, unspeakable joy. Now, this comes from a mathematician, okay? <laughs> because all of a sudden, when you have this mountaintop experience, there is something that, you, you, that, 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 that compels you with the love of God. Uh, where, where you, and I just want to say, if, 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 if you haven't had this in your life, it can become your, the part of your story. God, God wants me, even if you do a bold prayer and say, God, I'll give you two weeks. <laughs> God can show up. The Bible says if we seek him with all his heart, we'll find him. And, and I found this to be true all over, all over the world. And if, if, if you're running dry, you know, and you need a fresh word from God, there have been maybe some circumstances in your life, you know, it's good that you're here because God wants, God wants to meet you. Now, if we read on in uh, Mark uh, chapter 9, we, we find something very interesting because Peter looks around He's in this presence of God. He is having this mountaintop experience. And he says, now this is God. This is the only time we find Peter being humble in the New Testament. Because what, what, what he says is like, this is so good. Let's build three huts. Let's build three churches here on the mountain. And he's so humble that he says, I don't even need one. It's one for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now, if you have experienced the presence of God, that's your answer. You don't even need this. You just want to hang out. But he basically says, let's build the church on, on, on the mountain and, and, and just camp out here because it's so beautiful. But then what does Jesus say? He, he, he turns around and says, yeah, this is a great idea. Let's stay here on the mountain and sing Kumbaya until I come back again. No, he doesn't. He actually turns around and says, no, 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 we are going down into the valley. Now, if you read on chapter 9, what happens in the valley? The first experience they are having is, is they are meeting a demon-possessed child. Then Jesus talks about, uh, to his disciples about what it, uh, that, that he will die as part of, of, uh, 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 of, uh, of, of this whole kingdom of God thing. And then he says, whoever wants to be the greatest needs to be a servant. So there's a demon-possessed child. Death is somehow part of the ministry of Jesus. And then whoever wants to be greatest needs to be a servant. So basically he calls them from the mountain into the valley. Now I don't know about you, but I, I want to stay in the presence of God. I want to build my church on the mountain. I, I want to let, let's have some more songs. Let's have some more day, 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 time together so that, that we capture what has happened here on the mountain. Whereby Jesus has already left the building. And this Jesus is already down into the valley, into the depth of the suffering of, 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 of this world. He's saying, yes, let's have these moments on the mountain, but actually this movement of God is always a movement that wants to bring the mountain into the demon-possessed valley, into the suffering of this world, into the places where, where, where there are people who are crying, where are people who are in need, where there are people who have no hope. 
And so where we want to sometimes build even today our churches and our traditions on the mountain, we realize we are following a God if we want to be close to him that goes into, into the demon-possessed valleys, into the places where there is darkness and where there is suffering. One very important prayer, and, and some of you have studied it during the weeks of, of Kingdom First, is, a, is the Lord's Prayer. And, and that really changed my understanding of, of what it is all about. Because in, in, in the Lord's Prayer, we pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now in Greek, the little word for will is the word telema. So your telema will be done. And telema can be translated with will, as in most English language, uh, Bibles, but it also can be translated as desire, as passion, and as dream. So what we're praying in the Lord's Prayer is your kingdom come, your desire, your passion, your dream for this world. And then what, what, what is this dream? What is this passion, and this desire of God? We find in the next words. For whatever happens in heaven to actually happen here on earth. Now, time out. I, I don't know about you, but when I became a Christian, what basically people told me, it's, it's, it's the other way around. It's now you have a ticket, Philip, to actually go to heaven and, and make sure you don't lose that ticket <laughs> and tell other people to get this ticket. Now, don't worry. I know where I'm going when I'm dying. But basically, Jesus turns this upside down and says, it's not so much about me going to heaven. It's not just about the pie in the sky when I die. It's actually about this revolution to turn this world into the world it ought to be. To actually see how heaven breaks into all aspects of society and bring the shalom and the peace and, 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 the, and the wholeness of God into all aspects of this world. For God so loved the whole world, the whole cosmos that he gave us his life. It's not, just, it's not just about the church. We don't pray in this prayer, thy church come, but thy kingdom come for heaven on earth to actually take root. Now sometimes we made it too complicated. Because actually we only have to ask ourselves, you know, what does heaven look like? And then we know what our work and what our calling is as, as Christians and as the church. Will there be hatred in heaven? Of course not. That's why when we love, we experience a peace of heaven on earth. Will there be people in need in heaven? Of course not. That's why when we serve and help people in need, a peace of heaven is breaking in. Are people going to be in bondage in heaven? No, that's why we proclaim the powerful message of forgiveness and what, how, how Jesus can, can, set, can set you free. Will there be poor people in heaven? No, that's why we, we, we take care of the poor. That's why there are over 2,000 verses in Scripture that how, what our mandate is to serve and love the poor. Will there be loneliness in heaven? No, that's why we go into the elderly home. That's why we look for where is loneliness in our community. Will there be war in heaven? Of course not. That's why we are agents of peace. And that's why that is part of our tradition. Will, there, will we exploit God's creation in heaven? No, that's why we take care of the environment. Will there be greed in heaven? No, that's why we are generous people. Is there going to be injustice and oppression in heaven? No, that's why wherever there is injustice and oppression, we are fighting and standing up for justice. Will there be suffering in heaven? No, we know that one day every tear will be wiped away, but we can be already now part of the tribe that actually wipes away tears in the here and now. And, and because Jesus said the kingdom is here and it's not here, we can experience aspects of it in the here and now. And there are people in our community, not just in Germany, but people here in your community who are crying tonight, who don't know how to face tomorrow. And actually, we should be the hands and feet of Christ to actually make sure that we can wipe away some tears. You know, this idea of being the body of Christ that Paul talks about, I, I think we, we read it wrong. You know, in the Western world, often we're not as much the body of Christ as just being the mouth of Christ. We do a lot of singing and a lot of preaching. Now, I'm a preacher, so there's job security in it for me, so let's not all say that this is wrong. Let's keep singing, let's keep preaching. But we are also the hands and feet of Jesus 
in this world. We are now bodily present. In, and where would, would Jesus be present? He would be present in the most dark and ugly places of our community. That's where Jesus would be. And that's where we as a church need to be. You know, sometimes we think that the church, uh, uh, you know, has a mission. But actually that's wrong. The mission has a church. God has this mission of bringing heaven to earth and he's inviting the church to be part of this unbelievable revolution to turn this world into the world it ought to be. To bring healing and wholeness into the places where brokenness and suffering is more the reality. So where is more hell on earth than heaven? That's where the church actually is called to go and be and love. Not to judge, but to restore. Not to condemn, but to heal. So I don't know which part of Mark chapter 9 you need this morning. I want to ask the musicians to kind of come up here. We're going to sing a last song. Maybe you need that mountaintop experience. Maybe you've never really met God. And, uh, and maybe this is your prayer. God, if, if you exist, I, I'm, I'm, I'm open. I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want to have that mountaintop experience. Maybe you've run dry. Maybe there are some circumstances in your life. You don't know if God is for you or not, and you just need to hear from God. Hey, I, I love you. There's nothing you can do that makes me love you one inch less. You know, make that your prayer. Maybe you have had these mountaintop experience. And if you are honest, you want to build that church on the mountain. Let's make it even nicer on the mountain. And let's talk about the good old times. <laughs> and now let's have our theme song, I Shall Not Be Moved. <laughs> Whereby we realize God is already on the move into the demon-possessed valley. And you need us openly saying it, you need to Repent. And to say, God, I, I've, I've my, only got part of the story. I'm also now wanting to step up and wanting to go into the valley and into the suffering of the world to bring the peace of, my, of the mountain into the places that so desperately need it. God, break my heart for what breaks your heart. It's a dangerous prayer. But I tell you, your life will be the most unbelievable adventure. When you experience something on the mountain and then realize we can be this movement of people that brings heaven to earth in the valley. That can give you a purpose beyond anything that the world can offer. Let's pray. Father, I, I thank you for this morning. I I thank you that we can come together and uh, hear from you. And I just pray, God, if, if there's somebody who, who needs the mountaintop experience, who, who, who needs some fresh word in their soul, maybe in their own personal suffering, I, and I just pray, God, that, that you meet this person, that you meet us this morning. God, we, we don't want to... We don't just want to say that we can go through life alone. We need your help. We need to have these moments where you fill us with your love. God, but then I also pray for us who, who had these moments and who know that you are real and that you, that you are a good God that meets us at the mountain. I just pray, God, that, that we would have the courage to follow you into the into the depth and into the suffering and into the pain of this world, that we truly can be the hands and feet of Christ in the here and now. God, I pray that we are not going to shy away, that we're not just going to be people who build our churches on the mountain, but that we actually want to bring a mountain into the valley, that we actually want to bring heaven to earth, God. And so we just want to tell you we are available for your move. We want to go where you lead us even if we are scared, even if we don't know what it all looks like. Bless us in Jesus' name. Bless us so we can be a blessing. Amen.
sing Reckless Love. Before I spoke a word, you sing it over me. You have been so, so
Oh, amen, amen. Praise be to God, right? So good. I was just thinking like uh, when we have a godly imagination, we begin to see the, the possibilities of the long and far and deep reach of the Father's love, right? Through us who embody the love of Christ. Amen. Hey, we had um, we had a, a kind of a, a little rhyme that we said uh, as parents with our kids. Um, I, I still all of a sudden had this picture of us uh, driving down the 101 uh, freeway in California with our family. and um, But I, I remember this. like, So it was just for kids, right? Maybe for us. Love is like a magic penny. You hold it tight and you won't have any. But you lend it and you spend it. You'll have so many, they'll roll all over the floor. <laughs> and I just thought, praise the Lord, man. This dynamic of the love of God is meant to be experienced and given away. Amen. God be with you. Peace of Christ over you. And may you deposit the reality of shalom every place you go. God's peace. Amen.